السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters as you can see it brings a smile on the face to be here after a long time and I'm also very happy to make it straight from the airport to the masjid and from the door to the podium. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. I feel as fresh as ever and that's because of the love we have fi sabilillah. But I want to tell you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed mankind and Allah has blessed entire creation with many blessings. It's important for us to recognize the main and most important of these blessings and to appreciate these blessings, to cherish these blessings and to make sure that we don't allow them to go by without looking at them the way Allah wants us to look at them. So if I were to ask you, Name me some of the favors of Allah upon you. What would you say? Can you say something? What are some of the biggest favors of Allah upon you? Let's hear. What do you say? Anyone? More important than breathing. MashaAllah. Yes. The gift of Islam. Powerful. Which means the gift of the ability to submit to Allah and the acceptance to fulfill it. You see? What else? Who can say something? MashaAllah, the ni'mah of water. Water is a great gift. But I want to tell you what is more important than our food and our drink is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The brother said Islam. Yes, these are also gifts that were mentioned. But if you look at one of the biggest gifts of Allah, he created insan to worship him that itself is a gift allah made me and guided me with a specific type of a body indeed we have created man in the best of postures so the body we have is brilliant it's amazing I've always spoken about where the eyes are, the ears, etc., etc. Amazing, beautiful. But Allah says, I created you with a certain type of a brain, with a certain understanding, in a certain tense. You know what that means? Time is a creature of Allah. Future tense, present tense, past tense. Allah says, I created you in what is known as present tense for you, which will become past tense. And you look forward to the future tense. Subhanallah. Time is a creature. Allah will destroy time. There will come a time when we will not be able to ask, how long are you here for? That question will not be applicable. Nobody will ask it because there will be an everlasting bliss. <laughs> Dwelling therein forever, eternity. It's something that is not understood by this brain of ours. Allah gives the brains different capacities when it comes to different creatures. The brain of a bird understands things differently. The brain of a dog, for example, understands things slightly differently, processes colors in a different way. The brain of any other creature of Allah, a fish, a whale, whatever it may be, all of these creatures have some understanding, but to different degrees. When it comes to man, man has the most sophisticated brain, but each human being will have a different level of usage of the brain and understanding based on several factors. What are these factors? The effect and the impact of your surroundings and those around you will determine how you think, what you look at, right and wrong. People believe you're a terrorist because they were trained to understand that after certain incidences took place on earth at times 
Whereas the fair minded will understand in every race there is good and bad. In every nationality there is good and bad. In every tribe there is good and bad. In every person there is good and bad. Subhanallah. In the followers of every faith there will be good and bad. Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. That's fair. But for someone who's not grown up in an environment that teaches him or her the balance, he or she will begin to think these people are all bad. Those people are all good. We are all good. Everyone else is terrible. That is definitely a deficiency. It's a deficiency. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he underscored something, the matter of racism, the matter of a person thinking he or she is better than others. He says, La fadla li Arabiyin ala ajami. There is no virtue. No virtue, no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab. Imagine he had to say that. Many of us, no matter what tribe you belong to or where you come from or your area or your ethnicity or whatever else it may be, many of us are guilty of saying the opposite of that regarding tribes and regarding uh, ethnicities that are not as grand in terms of the depth and the history of the Arabs. But still the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the Arabs are not superior. So if the Arabs are not superior, what makes us superior? We are not. Nobody is superior than another. Not at all. Except by what? By your relationship with Allah. Illa bi taqwa. Your relationship with Allah is only known by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It seemed very important, my brothers and sisters, to realize that hadith says every child is born upon a formatted hard drive. That's called Al Fitra. Hard drive formatted. You got a new phone, you turned it on. It asks you what language you choose a language. It asks you what, what type of screen you choose the screen, what size of font you choose the font, what applications you choose the applications, you download them. When it's new, once you've downloaded everything, your phone operates according to how the initial settings of that phone were. The same applies to a human being. Baby born. You install the language, right? You install the habits. You install the culture. And guess what? You also install initially the religion. That's what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi says. Why do I say initially? Because there comes a time in your life when you are asked by Allah to ask questions and to make sure you are believing because you firmly believe in what you're believing in. Allah says, ask questions, go find out, do your research, check, see whatever is available. Look at the religions and check what is right. Worship your maker alone. Who teaches you that? Be disciplined. Don't have bad habits. Which religion teaches you that? Develop yourself in your character and conduct. Let it be the best. Which religion teaches you that? It is Islam that teaches you the combination of that. And that is a gift of Allah. There are some religions that will teach you monotheism, but they will teach you that everyone else is just human only because it was a favor of Allah to make them human to serve us or they would have been animals. We don't say that. We don't say that. For us, we're all the same. We ask Allah to grant us goodness. So this is a favor of Allah. Do not consider yourself superior to others except by that favor of Allah that he has given you. What is it? Taqwa, the consciousness of Allah, your relationship with Allah. Do you worship Allah alone? Yes, you do. Well, you're lucky. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You're lucky. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. We are fortunate. You know, the last time I said lucky, one youngster came to me and says, there's no luck in Islam. I said, well, look, we use the term not referring to luck as in, you know, something that is just a game of chance. No, what we mean is we're fortunate. That's what is meant by the term. But when someone hasn't been speaking English since they were little or a language, they might start thinking, hey, you're suddenly in a casino. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. That's not it. We are fortunate. Mahdudin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of ourselves and our offspring. So that hadith says, when you're born, you're born on fitrah. What did I just say earlier? Fitrah means upon nature. 
I, I just gave you an example of that formatted hard drive. That's what I said, because I thought it would make it a bit easier to understand. Then the parents of the child either make them follow a certain faith, either Judaism or Christianity or fire worshippers or whatever else or Muslim, right? There goes. So isn't it a favor of Allah? Initially, for those who were born Muslim, they need to recognize that favor. Because if you look carefully, the reverts to Islam who came into Islam later on their own, at times appreciate the faith much more than those who were born because they take it for granted. By the way, it's okay. Mashallah. You work for Samsung. You have a Samsung every little while, a new one. I see the little brother in front of me is looking at me. Maybe he has an apple, subhanAllah. The apple that you cannot bite because it's bitten already. You know that? You can see I'm Android, right? So, oh, sorry, let's not start the wars here. It's your preference. But the point here is you work for a company. It's no big deal. Whether you have a S20, S21, S22, no big deal. But if someone has had uh, none of that and suddenly you give them the latest phone, they will be super excited. Three days, you won't see them. Like they've gone into a semi-idda, a little period of holding. Why? Check my phone. And once they're in it, they start installing things. You know, now there's a new little thing out called Clubhouse. Someone's telling me, are you on Clubhouse? I said, hey, we, we visited the clubhouse when we were kids, but we no longer... No, I'm talking of an app on your phone. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. The reality, the point I'm raising here, a very interesting point to say what you are accustomed to, at times you don't appreciate. You're used to it. But when you look at someone who's not used to something and they're favored, they say, oh, you mean I put my head on the ground only for he who made me? Yes. I don't have to go and confess to another human being as a Muslim. I just confess only to the one who made me. You mean he will forgive me immediately? You mean Islam is based on mercy and forgiveness? You mean I'm a good person? You mean I can go to paradise by just seeking the forgiveness of the Almighty and fulfilling obligations, staying away from prohibitions, worshipping him alone and no one else? Yes. 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 That is Islam. Favor of Allah. So we have that favor. Now let's look at another favor. Allah sent messengers to us to keep reminding us. Listen, worship Allah alone. Listen, worship Allah alone. Another few hundred years down. Listen, worship Allah alone. Another few hundred years down. Listen, worship Allah alone. Another few hundred years down. Listen, worship Allah alone. That's it. One of the biggest blessings we are the Ummah of Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we say Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli, best of creation, most noble of all messengers? Why do we say that? Allah chose him to be the final Nabi, even though in rank he has the highest rank. Because the final Nabi, generally, you would always look at some finality as being that which is. The most noble. What's left after this? It's only Qiyamah. So this message will last the longest, number one. Number two is it's broad. It encompasses entire humanity and extends to jinn kind as well. And on top of that, we're not expecting another messenger to come. We only have ambassadors of the deen. Today I'm standing here. Wallahi, I promise you. If we had no connection with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you wouldn't even know my name. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We are only here because of the love of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa What else? So that is the biggest favor. The biggest gift that Allah can bestow a human being is the love of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa This is it. And then the Rasul, what did he come with? He came with the word of Allah. So that word is the most powerful word in existence. There is nothing that compares to what Allah has sent down to his messengers. And the, the book that will remain to the end is the Quran. The others already, you and I know how many versions of the other scriptures they are and what has gone on and what discrepancies they are. The Quran from the east to the west, it is indeed the best. It has zero contamination. Those who claim, claim.
They are only claims. We can claim anything. Come and show us the evidence. Right now, let's go across the globe and check the Quran among the Muslims. And let's see. You won't find a discrepancy. Allah says, we have revealed this dhikr, this remembrance, this book, this, this word, the Quran. We will ensure its protection. That's it. One revert asks me, why do I have to pray in Arabic? I said, no. Prayer in English translates as a supplication, which is a dua. You can do that in any language you want, or you can even do it silently. Allah knows your supplication before you even utter it. But if you're talking of a certain set of actions and words known as salah, and you're translating it as prayer because there's no better word in the English language to bring it closer to your understanding, then that is an act of worship to Allah that will happen in Arabic because Allah wants you, O oh man, to adjust yourself to understand the word of Allah and not to adjust the word of Allah for you, O oh man, to understand. So everyone who's a Muslim, you have to have invested in learning the Quran as is because your salah would not be valid unless you did that no matter how hard it is you can have reverted today by the evening they'll tell you at least memorize one chapter of the quran you say one chapter you say yes one surah surah al-fatiha will take you 20 minutes to memorize if you are dedicated maximum and it will take you a minute to recite surat al-falaq surat al-nas surat for example al-ikhlas these are short surahs. You are going to have to know some of the Quran off by heart. I ask you a question. Show me by raising your hands. How many of you memorize Surah Fatiha off by heart? Put up your hand. Please. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. All of us, no exception. I just wanted to prove a point. That means you've memorized the Arabic. Now, if I ask you, how many of you speak the Arabic language? Put up your hands, please. You see, very few, very few. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Isn't that a miracle? A favor of Allah. Allah says, we have made this Quran simplified. Not only to memorize, but to understand, to look into, to ponder over, to fulfill, to follow, to practice, all of it. Who is going to do it from amongst you? We've done it. Here we are. And we continue to do it right up to the end. So thank Allah for this favor. Now, when you want to thank Allah for a favor, you need to appreciate it to begin with. How many of us read the Quran? We read it. MashaAllah, right? How many of us try to improve the recitation of the Quran? We should be doing that, inshallah. Come what may. We should be doing it by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Myself included. Learn to improve recitation. Get someone who knows to correct. Do you know why? Inna allaha la yarfa'u bihadha al-kitabi aqwaman wa yada'u bihi akhareen. It is the book of Allah. Allah says, through this book of Allah, He raises certain people and He drops certain people. You need to make sure your relationship with the Quran is solid. On the day of judgment, the Quran, it will bear witness for you or against you. The Quran will bear witness. Imagine the Quran comes and says, I bear witness for this person. What do you think the Quran will say? How do you bear witness for someone? He read me. He tried to perfect the recitation. He tried to understand as best as he could. He put into practice. He tried to better the practice and he conveyed it to others. What more do you want? That's why Allah tells us that there are certain VIPs on the day of judgment known as Ahlul Quran. Alladheenahum Ahlullahi wa khasatuhu. The Ahlul Quran, the people of the Quran, 
who have given importance to the Quran and expanded on it left, right and center because it is an ocean that has no coast. You will continue entire existences based on the Quran. That person will be the special people of Allah on the day of judgment. Imagine you have an event where there's all people, thousands of them, millions of them. And suddenly the one who is the main owner of the event, for example, you happen to be their guest, special guest. Where do you think you're going to be? What type of, what type of treatment do you think you're going to have? It's going to be amazing, right? Allah, walillahi al-mathalul a'la. His example is far higher than anything we've mentioned here. So thank Allah. Let's learn. Let's continue learning everything. Because when it comes to the Quran, it's not only the recitation. It's not only the improvement of the tajweed and the melody. But together with that, it is also learning the rules and regulations, learning the tafsir and the meanings, going deeper into understanding, trying to memorize, trying to see, trying to teach others, enjoying it enjoying when people listen to the quran they fall into different categories some of them get irritated because they can't wait for it to finish the imam starts reading a long surah in salah i know the imams are taught and instructed by the prophet muhammad to say when you're the imam you must be conscious of the weakest person behind don't lengthen it intentionally but Sometimes it's Salatul Fajr. We cannot just make it short just because you are there. Subhanallah. Totally short. At least you've got to read something. There is a Sunnah recitation here. So sometimes there will be. The Imam will lengthen it a little bit. Ask yourself, do I get irritated? If I get irritated, I just need to work on myself a little bit more. I want to have a better relationship with the Quran. You see? I want to have a, a relationship where when I hear a beautiful recitation, my whole mood becomes 10 notches better because I just heard a beautiful recital. I think here in Cape Town, we do have that to a great degree. Am I right or wrong? Don't we call it Cape Al Quran? Right? Beautiful place, mashallah. So when we hear beautiful recitation, automatically it should soothe us calm us this is also your connection with the quran but my beloved brothers and sisters the day that you can read a portion of the quran every day then you're talking business now you're dealing because the prophet muhammad sallam, says the best of deeds are those that are done regularly even if it's a little so i call on you Seriously, sincerely, my brothers, my sisters, set aside 10 minutes a day with the Quran. No matter whether you can read it quick or slow, meaning whether you're good at reciting or whether you're weak and poor. 10 minutes minimum. Beyond that, you can swim. I plead with you because it's for your benefit. And guess what? I'll get a reward for that too. So I'm encouraging you. But I'm serious. Your life will change. You start the day with the word of Allah. Do you know that if you want protection from shaitan, what do you do? You just have to repeat a few of the words of Allah. Done. Subhanallah. What is ayatul kursi? What are the mu'awwidat? What are these duas that you read? Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi an yahdurun Oh my Rabb, I seek your protection. I seek protection in you from the whispers of the devil. And I seek your protection that they should not even come in my presence. Whoa, verse of the Quran. Repeat it a few times and see what happens to you. Are you sincere? So for protection, you just have to repeat the verses of the Quran. Imagine you start your day with some of the Quran in order and you cover it every six months. Oh, mashallah, I did one khatam. I finished it. Some of us are more fortunate, less than that. In a month, it's over. We read a juz a day. Oh, good news. MashaAllah, he's doing well. Some of us are half of the Quran. We've memorized it, but we don't recite it on a daily basis. What a loss. What a loss. There are others doing better than us. We can't allow that to happen to us. So that's why I say, 
in order to appreciate a favor of Allah. You must be linked with it. You must understand it. Here is Allah's kalam. He tells you, I've given you this kalam. Here it is. That's why Allah says, وَإِذَا قُنِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Whenever the Quran is recited, you do two things. If you want mercy upon yourselves, you want mercy? When the Quran is recited, be silent and listen attentively. Listen attentively, listen to the words and be silent. Subhanallah. When you do that, you will achieve the mercy of Allah. It will descend upon you. It will come to you. You will feel, you will understand this link with Allah is the biggest gift. If you, if you lost your water, you lost your breath, you lost your life. But you earned the hereafter. Did you really lose? Nothing. Everyone has to go at some point. So our need for this revelation and this link with Allah is more desperate than our need for food and drink. Allah grant us goodness. And as time passes and we get closer to Qiyamah, we know that every time we talk of the signs of the hour, the signs of the hour, the signs of the hour, right? The signs of the hour fall into two main categories, good signs and bad signs. I mean, for Isa alayhi salam to come, is it a bad thing? It's a good thing, you know? And, and so on. So there's good things and bad things. And you need to understand one of the things that's not going to be so positive is you open the Mus'haf and the pages will be blank. Because the Quran, do you think Allah will keep a favor of his in our midst when nobody's appreciating it? He'll take it away. Gone. My brothers and sisters appreciate the favor of Allah upon us. Imagine if the Quran is gone, what would happen? We would be at a loss, isn't it? What if that time came right now? And that's why I want to tell you something technical, technical. Are you allowed to read your Quran from a mobile phone or an app or an iPad or a laptop? The answer is yes, I'm allowed. I can, I can use my phone open the app in there the Quran I can read from there and so on but what is better it is definitely better to pick up the physical Quran and flip its pages as you're reading why because for that one I need to follow certain etiquettes I need wudu I need to respect it in a certain way I need to make sure that I fulfilled its rights it is a mushaf so while both of them are acceptable one has a notch of virtue greater than the other you need to understand this. I would prefer that if we have a daily sitting, pick up the Mus'haf itself and open it. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. It's permissible to do it on the phone. If it's convenient for you, no problem. Start somewhere. So my brothers and sisters, that's the favor of Allah. If Allah is telling you, when someone is reading the Quran or it is being read, keep quiet, listen attentively. Imagine how important that must be. There's no other word or book that Allah says, keep quiet and listen attentively for besides the Quran, the Quran. And I want to tell you, and I'll end on this note. Do you know that the Quran, when you follow it correctly, it leads you to the Sunnah of the Prophet So nobody can come and say, I just follow the Quran. As for the Sunnah, I, I don't agree with it. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. You can't say that. There are people today. They say, no, there's all these weak hadith and all these... Ba'if and everything is, you know, I just ignore it totally. I take Quran. It's a verse, it's a verse. If not, I, it's out. No way, no way. You must learn what is Ba'if, what is not, and you must be able to, uh, you know, uh, understand. You must go to the scholars and learn from them and check what's going on. But that doesn't mean you discount it totally. The same Nabi, and this is what doesn't make sense. The same Prophet who's telling you, here's the Quran. And you're telling him, okay, I'll take that from you, but the rest of what you did is not important. Come on, come on, come on. How can you say that? I'll take this from you, but I won't take anything else. Why not? Be careful. People are going to take away your deen by making you deny the favor of the messenger who came to be the guide sent by Allah to you. And they'll tell you, no, what he brought in terms of the book, take it. 
everything else leave it not at all we will take what he brought in terms of revelation and we will understand it through his words we will understand it through what he taught because he explained it you look at salah i would never be able to fulfill my five daily prayers and do my wudu and understand this and so many other things if i didn't pick up the sunnah and read the ahadith the quran only has a brief mention of prayer and the Quran is not a book where it speaks to you in a secret code. You should understand, oh, but Salah was mentioned five times and that automatically means that you should be reading five times and one in the morning and one in the evening. We want to know precise clarity as to the exact timings. Wallahi, it only came to us from the Sunnah of the Prophet from the Hadith. Cannot deny that. So that's it. These are the gifts that we have. These are the primary gifts we have. And I chose to speak about it today because as I was coming, I was speaking to someone about how Islam works as a faith. And I was explaining, you know, primarily we have to have a link with the one who made us. That is what Islam is all about. And how did we, how would we be able to develop that link by following the messengers? And who is the final messenger? Muhammad Wasallam. Ultimately, we came down to Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us goodness. May Allah make us Ahlul Quran. May he resurrect us with those who are his special people who have a good link with the Quran. May he grant us forgiveness and may we continue seeking the forgiveness of Allah until we meet him while he is pleased with us and may Allah unite us with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions and those whom he loves us also being from among those whom Allah loves by his will his mercy his favor aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk